You've probably heard of GitHub Actions, but do you realize that your project should be using them? There are so many actions in the marketplace, almost 6,000 that you can use for free on your project with a few lines of YAML config, just a few lines. I'm gonna show you my favorite actions that I use on every project and why you should be using them too. If you're interested in writing your own custom actions, I do have a video on how to do that with JavaScript. I'll put a link in the description below. While you're there, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel below if you haven't already and hit the bell button so you get notified. So let's get started. This is the GitHub Actions Marketplace. As I mentioned before, they have almost 6,000 and they're categorized into deployments, learning, monitoring. There's just so, so many. Do have a look through them. Let me show you the ones that I always use. I always use the stale action on GitHub Actions. It goes through the backlog out of issues and pull requests and marks ones that haven't had any activity for 30 days. By default, you can change this to 60, 70, whatever you want. And it gives you like a five day warning so that you can see if you want to keep that open or if you want to close it. And if there's no more activity after that time is up, it will actually put a comment in and close it. It's really good to keep on top of the backlog so the backlog just doesn't grow with all these amazing ideas that will never get done. It keeps it active, keeps it concise, and it's just really important. I really enjoy using this because it kind of re-sparks the interest in that issue by the person who raised it and the community who are talking about it. So you can re-engage and talk about who's going to work on this issue and push that issue forward. There's plenty of config. An example use case is really, really simple. As I mentioned, you give it a name and that can be anything you want in the string. It's on a scheduler. You can run it. It's just like a cron. You can run it as often as you want. And then you need to say the jobs. It's going to have, you can give it the name stale, but you can call it something else if you wish. It's going to run on the Ubuntu latest and then or it's going to use the stale action. This is actually an official action from GitHub. You need to pass in your GitHub access token so that it can put a comment in the issue or pull request before it's going to close Close it. You don't have to create this in your GitHub secrets under your organization or your repository. This is already added to your action by GitHub Actions. And then you can give it a message to put for an issue or pull request. And that's the minimum that is needed. You can do so much more. You can say, make it stale at 30 days and give me a five day warning. There's so many things that you can do. Do have a look at this. It's really easy to use in your project. Next on my list is by Brian, Brian from GitHub. And this action is so good. It allows you to keep your fork up to date. So when someone forks your project, they can keep it up to date without having to fetch the upstream and merge in the upstream. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward to use. And by you having this in your repository, when someone forks it, they automatically get this action in their repo. So they wouldn't have to add this action to their fork. It's already there and already added. These YAML steps will look very familiar to you to the other one. It's just got a few extra steps. Another action that actually got recommended to me by Brian on a stream we did a week ago is Alex recommends. And what Alex does is it checks the content of the comments and the pull requests and makes sure that they're friendly and inclusive. I'm using it in the default setting. So my config is actually even more simpler than this. And we know performance always gets left at the last minute. And you probably use Lighthouse on Chrome. Why not put Lighthouse on your action to test your UI? And you're going to see it can give you lots of reports and lots of information. Let's look at some examples. So you've got output, you've got accessibility, best practice, performance, PWA, and your SEO score. So it's really good. You can see if you're going in the right direction each time you do a push to your project, are you improving this or are you making it worse? And then if you save the artifacts, you also get the HTML report, which looks a lot friendlier than the CLI one. No project is perfect, but if you can keep improving this every time, just by a little bit, it will get so much better over time. Again, another example of brushing your teeth little and often. And here's an example of how to use it. And if you want to run your own commands that you run locally on CI, I highly recommend you do that. These could be linters, these could be automated tests, it could be build commands. Run those on CI every time there is a change. Therefore, you know your project is in a good place. Any commands that you run locally, run them on your CI for every change. Therefore, if anything goes wrong, you know about it before you pull it down locally and try and run it yourself. CI will be there to check everything for you. If you want to join our GitHub organization so you can get more into open source and collaborate with awesome people, then raise an issue on our support repo and we'll send you an invite to our GitHub organization. Come and chat to us to Discord between live streams and videos. The link is in the description below. I'll chat to you soon. You need to pass it in your secret token. So it's access. No, you need to pass in your Git. No, I really enjoy the stale bot. 
No. I really enjoy the stale action. No. I always use the stale action. It's quite, no, let's start again. I always use the GitHub action for, uh, God, I can't speak English. 